excited that you are here. Well, I'm excited that I'm here on your show. Thank you. And that you're doing so incredibly well with the show. Thank you. And just to be here with you, I was watching the package that you put together. Oh, did I Standing back, it was fantastic. Okay. Thank you. Made me feel warm and fuzzy and all the feels. Um, but I wanted to tell the audience that that picture of us together when we were at The Voice, the robe that you're wearing, uh -huh. you ended up sending it to me as a gift, and I still have it. You still got it. And I love it, yes, I do. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness. Isn't she so nice? Like, not, yes. I think you're one of the most gentle spirits that I've ever met in this industry, and people just period. Like, she's so gracious. Mm -hmm. She's such a sweet human being, and so, like, thoughtful and compassionate about everyone. And that's what you are. That's why you can even notice that in somebody else. Wow because it's true, because we don't have the industry we're in is. It, it, it can be tough. It can be tough. Yeah. I'm grateful that I have you as an example, you know, to look up to and, and to get inspiration from, like, you, you know? Well, thank you for that. I look at you and what you've done and what you're continuing to do, and I think that's inspiring. How many is it now? It's, it's EGOTs? <laughs> How many? <laughs> <laughs> Remind me of that. I do. I don't let you let that go. When we were on you doing don't. the voice that day, and I was like, well, uh, she is an Oscar winner. I saw you stopped and looked at me like, why is she talking about my Oscar? Yeah. Like I was gonna come steal it. Oh my goodness. <laughs> Please, I'm trying to get some of them awards you got. Like I wanna know when you started out singing and writing, which one did you start doing first? I, I always sang like, uh -huh. since I was a little baby. Um, my mother tells this story about how she, because she was an opera singer. Right. And so she was singing this aria over and over and over and in Italian. And then she says that I sang, um, when she messed up, that I said, no, mommy, it goes like this in Italian and then told her how it went. So she was like, oh, she has an ear. So mm -hmm. she was very um, encouraging. So from the time I was really little, I just always sang. But like, as soon as I knew what it was to write something down. Mm -hmm. I started writing poetry and just making up little melodies. So I just sat on my mother's piano and just played, not knowing how to play, but just figuring it out. And mm -hmm. then, you know, the melody was in my head. And what happened was it was like too much melody, too little ability to play. So I ended up writing with other people. And I prefer to work with like really talented piano players or bass You love players. a good piano player, I, I know do. that. I do, I really do. I was blessed to work with Richard T. I mm -hmm. don't know if you're, but he knows. You gotta know who Richard T was. Oh, of course he knows. Played with Aretha and everything. Yes. Yeah. So, you know, I, I was blessed to work with a lot of really great, um, and, still, and still do. Daniel Moore, he's out there. Um, we're working together, writing some new music. Excited Are you writing that. some new music? Yes. <laughs> okay. What I want to know is, because I want to talk to the songwriter of Mariah right now. Yeah. Like, do you dream up a song? How does it come about? What's sometimes your process? Sometimes I think it. Sometimes it's just something that's like going over and over in my head and I have to go to my phone and record it on voice notes and just be like, it's, it's been every era of like what I used to record my songs. I used to, I used to call my uh, phone message, whatever it was back in the day when you yeah. call and just... Like your voicemail? Yeah, voicemail. And leave a message to yourself? And leave a message to myself with a little snippet of whatever I was hearing and just take it from there. Mm. And you just know, like, right off the bat, it's going straight to number one on the billboards. Yeah. Like, where, did, where does that part Save come in at? <laughs> we can't forget that part. <laughs> Please take me yes. back to the Divas Live performance in 1998 when you sang with Aretha Franklin. That was one of the best experiences ever. Such Look an iconic moment. So they said there's going to be this show called Divas. We were supposed to do something together on the show. Mm -hmm. And they had turned on the air conditioning too high. Mm -mm. Even turning it on at all was not OK mm -mm. for Miss Franklin, because she just and this is not saying anything that nobody else knows. Like, everybody knew that she didn't care for the air conditioning. I'm right with her. Uh -huh. uh, hi. I didn't know. Like, I'm the one that didn't know. And, and so I'm waiting there to rehearse with her. Then she comes out, Mariah, they're playing games. And I'm not having the games. <laughs> you do such a good impression. So we won't be rehearsing tonight. And I was like, okay. 
like, so I don't get to rehearse? Like, I, like, what am I supposed to do? She allowed me to go to her trailer okay. with her and learn how she was going to do it. She played on the piano, because I don't know if everybody knows. Yes, incredible. She was an incredible piano player. Yes, she was. didn't give her her propers right. when it came to that, mm -hmm. as she would say. Um, but she was in incredible. So she just played a little bit on the piano and dis we decided like how it was gonna be. It was an amazing moment and she said something. I said something, I don't remember what I said, mm -hmm. but she goes, like the sense of humor, typical Aries. And I'm like, Aretha Franklin <laughs> knows that I'm an Aries. Then I come to find out that we're born two days apart. Two days other. apart, yes, yeah. you guys are. Yeah. yeah. So it was one of the, my proudest moments because just being anywhere near her was just incredible. Okay, well, I got to ask you for a load of advice. So if I do a Christmas album, like, what, what's some tips that you can give me? Are you doing a Christmas album? Maybe. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I want to. You know it's my dream to do a Christmas album. Yes. Well, it's just, just do you. Your love of Christmas and your love of the holidays and... You can create anything that you want. You got your studio there, mm -hmm. you know. Mm -hmm. But is that in Chicago? It's in Chicago, and you have to know, in my studio, it's a picture of yourself, and it's a picture <laughs> of Prince, it's a picture of Sam Cooke, it's a picture wow. of Whitney, and it's a picture of Patti LaBelle and Aretha Franklin. And so whenever I'm singing, I call it my vocal throne room. Uh, I feel like an inspiration that comes to me from all of the greats like yourself uh, that has inspired me so much. I would not be here without you and all the legends. We got to have a girlfriend moment, right? OK, well, define that because okay. this is your show. It's my show. OK, yeah. well, I'm ha I got a few questions for us to answer. OK. You ready? Yes. Let's get We're answering them together, correct? We'll, we'll answer, yes, together. When was the last time you drove yourself somewhere? You like want to go first or you want me to go first? in the car, you go first. Yeah, alone in, a, alone in the car. That's a good way to bring it up because, okay. you know, I've been driving myself to work lately. Oh. Yeah, because, you know, yeah, child. <laughs> That's why I got my glasses on so I can see the road, all right? Because <laughs> Jennifer don't see well on the road. But to me, it gives us a chance to find our inner peace and drive around. Now, I ain't going to lie, I only really drive up one street uh -huh. for the most part. <laughs> how about you? Like, how often do you drive? If there were one street that I could say, okay, this is a safe street for me to drive, I would do that. Okay. But the thing is, it's just better for me to go with somebody in the car <laughs> and not drive. But I can drive. I was going to ask, can you drive? I could drive. I was going to get my license because I don't have my license. You, you don't have a license? No. Now, this is interesting. Yeah. Because <laughs> I let it expire. Okay, but you had one before. I did have one, and then I left where I was living and was living in the city, and you don't really want to drive in Manhattan. Well, no, I, don't, I don't. That's true. I don't like blame you for Manhattan. that. And then when I went to go be like, okay, well, you know, my license, they were like, oh, well, it's expired, and it expired, like, seven years ago, so what? <laughs> <laughs> so then I was going to have to take the test again, and I was like, I don't... I don't think I'll pass if I took the test again. That's what I'm saying. I'm with you. This so now good. I'm going to try and get the license again, OK? OK, OK, right. OK. I want a car ride. I want to ride with you. OK, before I get to this one, I don't know if you know, but you inspired my dream closet at my house, too. Okay. And this brings me to this question. What's the most casual item of clothing in your closet? It's probably some hideous slides that someone made me purchase. Mm. Because I don't do sneakers. I, I wear, like... You don't? No. Ooh, that's what we do. I, I get a blister on the back of my foot if I do. So you prefer heels? Well, that's the problem. The heels hurt, too, so they I do. don't really know what to do. <laughs> but you could get around better in the heels. I just walk on my toes anyway, like, no matter what, I've always done that. So it's kind of a thing. MC, you don't know about that one. I prefer... <laughs> uh, I put my good shoe on for you today, but... I, I wear mean, slippers. You wear slippers? Yeah, like fuzzy slippers. I like fuzzy slippers, too. Yeah. OK, mm -hmm. that's a plus. So we can relate to that. Yes, we can. Yeah. We okay. can. Ooh, what's the craziest thing that ever happened to you while performing on stage? I don't know what happened. What was the craziest thing that ever happened to you? I think my fans got a lot of sense, so they don't do nothing too crazy. <laughs> you see? <laughs> um, probably threw a shoe at me on the Ooh. stage. Because, you know, I throw shoes when you right, sing good, right. right? Well, I got that same shoe, and I had to duck <laughs> when they oh, threw the shoe at me. wow. I would say 
that. Somebody climbed up on stage once. Yeah. And the security had to take them down. Mm. I'd imagine yeah. that happens to you a lot, though. Uh, not really. People don't, I mean, they're like watching the show and do whatever, you know, but one person did. It was got, all right. We got through it. Clearly, we're sitting here. We're sitting here. If you like this video, smash that like button and subscribe to the Jennifer Hudson Show YouTube channel. Check your local listings or visit JenniferHudsonShow.com to see when you can watch full episodes in your area. And don't forget to sign up for the newsletter.